name is Jill Heinerth, and I'm the explorer in residence for the Royal Canadian Geographical Society. Growing up as a young woman, I was a girl guide. I loved being in the outdoors, having adventures, exploring my world. And as a child, I had the opportunity to watch men walking on the surface of the moon. I mean, imagine a classroom full of kids, you know, all herded into the school library to look at a crackling black and white television and then seeing people on the surface of the moon. It was absolutely extraordinary to me. And I thought, I want to do that. And I remember running home and saying, Mom, I want to be an astronaut. And she said, Dear, I'm afraid we don't have a Canadian space program. And well, there are no girl astronauts. Now, that was a barrier that was really perceived in my childlike brain. But those barriers are only perceptions. And we have an opportunity, every one of us, to be explorers. And today, my work takes me all around the world to exciting places underwater where I can interact with incredible animals, shipwrecks, and even dive in underwater cave systems. Now, my work requires quite a bit of problem solving and, as you can see, quite a lot of equipment. In fact, the gear that I wear today is about as complicated as what an astronaut wears. And in fact, the technology is the same for life support. So what an astronaut needs to take a spacewalk from the International Space Station, that's what I use underwater. Now, as I do my work, I travel all around the world to the Arctic, the polar regions, Antarctica, also to places where you wouldn't imagine that people would go diving, like the Sahara Desert. Yep, there are places to dive there too. And in my expeditions, I've done everything from swimming with wild polar bears to going to places where no human has ever been before, bringing back those images to get other people excited about exploration. Now, who is an explorer? Well, you're an explorer. I'm an explorer. We're all explorers because we engage our creative, you know, curiosity-filled minds in learning about new things. Now, I know you might look at me and say, well, she doesn't look like an explorer. And you might be thinking of images of early explorers who first, you know, lived in North America or later uh, people who settled here. You might be thinking about these historic figures. But you might also be thinking of people like Dora the Explorer, right? Well, the truth is, like I said, that we are all explorers. And even if you're young and you're just creating a tent in your bedroom and, and imagining places where you might go in the future, then you are an explorer too. So what about the traits of explorers? What does it take to be an explorer? Well, we are all seekers. We don't necessarily have maps or handbooks. We actually make them so that other people can follow in our footsteps. So that means we're engaging skills like curiosity, open-mindedness. We're also strong. We're helpful. We're problem solvers. And we're very careful. Some of the things that we do as explorers are dangerous, but we engage our explorer's mindset to do those dangerous things in a safer way. So just because you engage in dangerous activities doesn't mean you have to do it dangerously. I began my underwater experiences in Tobermory, Canada, in what is now Fathom 5 Underwater National Marine Sanctuary, a place where even in your first few dives, you can dive on historic shipwrecks. Some of these shipwrecks, these beautiful wooden boats, have been down underneath the surface, sunk for over 200 years. Since that time, I've done a lot of diving in Canada, in all parts of Canada, from our most, most northern extremes, like here on top of the sea ice, on top of the Northwest Passage 
in the Arctic, or here, even underneath an iceberg floating off the Labrador coast. We have many opportunities to document amazing things in our underwater geography, a geography that's hidden from most people, a geography that most people never get a chance to experience unless they become a diver. I've even been inside icebergs in Antarctica. In fact, I was the very first person to cave dive inside an iceberg. Now, my work involves um, both academic work with educational organizations. It also involves um, camera work, shooting um, with my still camera or a video camera underwater for television programs. And it involves going to faraway places like this, right on the border of Libya, where in the middle of a very dry part of the world, I can still find water. Some of my work has even taken me under the Ural Mountains in Russia, or inside a volcanic lava tube in the Canary Islands. My work usually involves working with a team of people on an expedition, and we go to places like Cuba and work with local families there. Now, I also do a little bit of teaching, teaching other people about exploration or using cameras in remote places, like even working with people like this. This is James Cameron, and I helped him with some of the early camera tests as he was preparing to shoot the Avatar series. So when you find me underwater, you find me with my tools for exploration that include these big, heavy camera systems so that I can document things like these whale sharks off of Mexico, or these beautiful mobile rays off of the Azores, or even a simple manatee mother and her calf feeding in the Crystal River in Florida. But my specialty really is going into these underwater cave systems. And I know what you're thinking. Why on earth would anyone want to dive into the blackness of an underwater cave system? Sounds dangerous, doesn't it? Well, truthfully, these cave systems are pretty remarkable. They're like museums of natural history. And I have a chance to learn about global climate change from studying the rocks in these places. I also have a chance to work with scientists who are interested in archaeology and paleontology and the remains left behind by ancient civilizations that looked at these caves as portals to another world. Now, I also work with biologists who are fascinated by the life within these cave systems, because even though it's complete darkness here, there's a bounty of life, unique animals that have no eyes or no pigment and somehow learn to hunt in these very food-scarce environments. But I know as you see these images, you're going to agree with me that these are beautiful places that are worthy of exploration. And many of these water-filled cave passages actually represent your drinking water. I'm literally swimming through the veins of Mother Earth within the sustenance of the planet. That sustenance that we all rely on for our drinking water, that nature needs to grow, that crops require to grow, and that our industries require to continue. So, you know, as a kid, I wanted to be that explorer. I wanted to help. And I've learned through my experiences that I can apply those desires as a young child to what I do today. So today, I might be helping by pulling a sea turtle out of a ghost net that's been entangled underwater and allowing him to continue his life as he swims free. The important thing for you to know, though, is that we are all explorers. We all have opportunities to step into the blackness. For me, I'm literally swimming into a completely black underwater cave system. And I don't expect you to do that. But there are things that might scare you as much as thinking about an underwater cave. And when we step towards that darkness and allow our eyes to adjust 
to that new level of light, and we have patience and start taking things in, that's when we all have the opportunity to be explorers and maybe discover something new for ourselves or perhaps something new for all of humanity. And that's an incredible opportunity. That's why I wanted to be an explorer. And I imagine that's why you want to be an explorer too. Thank you.